today we are talking to uh, David Popel. He is a professor of psychology at New York University and uh, Max Planck Institute. And we are uh, interviewing uh, Dr. Popel for the uh, Organization for Human Brain Mapping in Geneva. Um, and we will talk about uh, his research on speech perception and psychology. Um, to start, I was just wondering about um, why did you decide to go uh, into the study of language and specifically uh, into the study of uh, speech perception? It's easy to want to study language because it's what makes us us. It's the, most, it's the most convenient and compelling feature that we have. If we didn't have it, we couldn't have this conversation. So how would you say um, our communication through language is similar to non-language communication? Uh, I mean, that's a good, hard, deep question for which we have no good answer. Right? So it's the, they're at the periphery, let's say, using the apparatus we have, the input systems and the output systems, we can learn a lot from studying animal communication systems. But there are certain attributes of human language that are just quite different and for which we have no compelling animal models. So some of the things we study are, you know, that are interesting and that illuminate our knowledge are, let's say, bird song or you know, the gestural communication, and those are wonderful, important additions to our knowledge, but there are certain attributes of being a speaker of a language as a human that are unusual, and that includes, on the one hand, the kind of peculiarly structured and complicated vocabulary. Uh, in your lab, what, um, what is the, um, one of the most important projects that you focus on? How is it relevant to the, to the society? In my laboratory, we focus on basic science. Right? So basic questions about the organization of perceptual systems, the auditory system, and, and how we process language. So there's no, you know, we don't build products, diagnoses, therapeutic interventions. But the, of course, the long-term goal is that the insights we bring um, help uh, in all this kind of standard issues for improved communication, for diagnosis, for, you know, a typical case of stroke aphasia, rehabilitation, developmental disorders, you name it. So some of the work we've done has some very interesting uh, and practical implications for developmental speech disorders, for instance. Dem anwenden muss das erkennen vorangehen. Which means the application has to be preceded by basic insight. And I think that's very right, right? So you really try to understand a system and its parts and how they interact before you kind of build the thing. You know, you want me to test the stuff before I give you a pill, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the general idea. So what would you say um, is your most surprising finding? My most surprising finding is that we ever find anything, right? Because, so that's why we're at this meeting, right? So one of the remarkable things of the last 20 years or 30 years has been the you know, astonishing technical development of the devices that we all use. I mean, that's sort of um, a qu quite remarkable achievement. I remember when I was a graduate student and I read the first papers and on imaging, some of which were actually on language. I was both simultaneously excited and appalled, and uh, but it really stimulated me and made me very passionate about this stuff. The, but notice that until the, you know, 20 years ago, we were not able to do any of the things we're now addressing. It was, not, it was inconceivable about that. Now we're kind of, in, so let's say there was the age of fascination and the age of uh, growth. Now I think we're beginning to enter a kind of age of maturity where we can celebrate the amazing tools we have and the techniques and analytic approaches we have and we can start to be a little bit critical about our own research. So the, the two things that I work on a lot in my lab, I think both of which have, well, I naively hope have some value. And one is really a kind of, you know, questions about the structural organization in the brain. So with one of my um, close colleagues, Greg Hickok from Irvine, over many years we've developed a and a functional anatomic model, kind of pretty widely known as a dual stream model mm -hmm. of language processing, which admittedly, you know, and, on, and in writing, and we stole straight from the visual system. So one of the amazing things, is that, you know, we know a lot about the visual system and its an anatomic and physiological foundations. And some of those ideas struck us as potentially useful for the language system. Totally different is work that I've been focusing on for a number of years on uh, neurophysiology and there, primarily, I've been using magnetoencephalography, or MEG, mm -hmm. which is a technique I've, I've begun to obsess about in the last few years. And primarily because, you know, perceptual processing, language processing is super fast. What is your biggest dream that you want to achieve in research? My biggest dream that I want to achieve in research? 
maybe your dreams get more modest as you cross into the precarious years of middle age. Of the many dreams I have for my labs, one that I'm really particularly obsessing about right now is what does it mean to store you know, your words? Because those are sort of the intersection of everything. So to have 100,000 things stored in your, in your memory in a way that it can be listened to, spoken, read, signed, it means that the encoding of that is actually extremely complicated and subtle. What do you think, in your opinion, is the coolest meaning in language? The coolest one? I mean, look, I'd have to say, you know, all of my own, right? Uh, 